I'm here at the Ducati headquarters. I've just picked up a Scrambler 62. It's the AT version of their ever popular Scrambler series that came out a couple years back. You might remember that Susie tested this bike out in Barcelona, but in true bike world fashion, it was bucketing it down with rain. So for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be riding it and seeing what it's like to live with. Insurance costs, running costs, all that boring stuff. But at the same time, seeing how it stacks up against the competition. 2017 is a great year to be an A2 rider. We've got bikes coming out the woodworks that are cool to ride and manufacturers seem to have finally realised that that's what we want. My time with the 62 has come to an end, and in order to give it the proper send-off it deserves, we've come here to Brands Hatch for Festival Italia, an automotive event dedicated to celebrating all things Italian. When the first Scrambler Concepts hit trade shows, I was well into my obsession with getting a bike. I was excited for the fact that it was an entry-level Ducati because it's one of those brands you always hear about when you're growing up and you wonder if you'll ever get a chance to ride one. So when it actually came out and it was 883cc, 75 horsepower, it meant I couldn't ride it, so I was gutted. But fast forward two years, and you've now got the 62. With a 400cc L-twin two-valve engine making a comfortable 41 horsepower, it's well within my ability to ride it as an A2 license holder. But it's also enough to have a good deal of fun on it. But there were problems for me. Firstly was the price. It's only £600 cheaper than the base Scrambler Icon, and for me that's nothing to scoff at. But after two weeks of riding it, I've got to say it's proven itself as a great option for novice A2 riders and those looking for a sub 500cc bike to get around town on. The first thing I like about it is the size of the thing. One of the main things about stepping up to a bigger bike as a novice rider is that it can be quite intimidating, particularly with bikes that are really big, like the BMW R1200GS. Like, I thought that was a tank when I first looked at it. Now I've gotten used to it, but for that step up point, this is perfect. You throw a leg over it, it's got the wide bars, a tall commanding riding position, and you just instantly feel at home on the thing. Speaking of those tall wide bars, it's really minimum effort to turn this thing in, especially when you're in town, riding around through traffic, filtering. They're a little bit wide sometimes for when you're trying to get through tight spaces. Overall though, I found it was more of a benefit than a hindrance. With a relatively low weight of 175 kilos, a nice low seat height, it makes filtering again a real breeze. If you feel that the bike's tipping over a little bit, you can just put a foot down and feel comfortable in the knowledge that you're not gonna drop this thing, which is one of the main things you think about when you're a novice rider and everyone tells you you're gonna do. One thing you do pay for with the premium entry-level bikes is good brakes. You've got Brembo 320mm floating calipers, which means as soon as you squeeze your fingers, you've got instant feel, and it just makes you feel a lot more confident when you're out on the roads. And with the addition of ABS, if you've got wet conditions and gravel on the road, which in the UK is most of the time, you're not going to be worried about dropping your new pride and joy. With 41 horses and 34 newton meters of torque, it puts the 62 in the same sort of territory as the KTM 390 Duke, which does come in about a grand and a half cheaper. If performance and cost was the only factor in buying a bike, then the 62 would definitely lose points here. But in reality, like you can see at Festival Italia, in the end, you're paying for a brand, you're paying for that identity of owning a Ducati, and it is still a scrambler. It might be a baby scrambler, but technically that's closer to the original formula that Ducati laid out with the 250cc 62 that this is based on. Of course, if we're talking about brand and heritage, there is another option, that's your Triumph Street Twin range. They do come restricted, but one of the things I don't really talk about is insurance. 
any bike over 500cc for an A2 rider is going to cost you a bomb to insure. Trust me, I insured my V7 and it set me back a hell of a lot of money. And finally, your last option is to look at the retro custom scene. So that's buying an old Honda CB550, spending two grand, making it up to be a cafe racer project. But again, insurance is a problem here because you can't go to an insurance provider and say you've done all the mods on this bike, you, you just won't get any insurance. So really, if you want a retro, cool looking bike that is reliable, performs, and does everything you really ask of it, then a bike like the 62 is a brilliant option. But I'm not saying this is a perfect bike. You can definitely see places where a bit of budget saving has gone on. For example, with the indicator cancellation. It's really hard to tell when the indicator is, has turned off or not. I mean, you, you're searching left and right, seeing whether it's on or off, and you're not concentrating on the road ahead, which for novice riders is one of the most important things you have to do. Next is the actual ergonomics of the thing. While it's, it's great having that tall commanding riding position, it, with your knees tucked in, it, it does start to feel a bit like a cruiser and a little bit uncomfortable on longer journeys. I'm not saying it won't do a longer journey, it will happily sit at 70 at about 6,000 RPM, but it does just get a bit uncomfortable after an hour. I felt like my bum was pinching into the seat and I was having to wiggle around to, to feel a bit comfortable. But there aren't many bikes, at least naked retro bikes, where you're not going to feel a little bit uncomfortable after a length of time. One thing I'd definitely change about this thing is the sound of it. I mean, that's Euro 4 regulations. Manufacturers are trying to do everything they can to still make it sound decent while performing to the standards that have been set. But stick a new end can on it and it will sound way more like a scrambler should. Another thing, quite a common problem with Ducatis, it runs hot. Now, Susie said it ran hot in Barcelona, but when it was bucketing it down with rain, it's actually quite nice to have a little bit of heat between your thighs. But for me, on a day like today, it, I felt it, and my pair felt it as well. So another little thing that I didn't expect to be annoyed about was the lack of a USB slot. I'm the generation where I'm stuck to my phone all the time. I'm sure you are as well. I was on a long journey and running out of battery, went to lift up the seat knowing that the Scrambler has a USB slot and found the actual port but, but nowhere to actually stick my USB in. Without going into the detail of how many miles per gallon this thing will do, we found that in two weeks, we had to fill it up twice. And I was thrashing this thing around the country road and in stop and start traffic, you'd expect it to guzzle. But again, 400cc with the fueling that they've got on it, it was perfect. Ducati are breaking a bit of new ground here by suggesting that an entry level bike doesn't have to be budget and it doesn't have to be a second hand shitter you've got from someone's shed. But with Ducati's Tri Options Finance, this bike is accessible, even for a cheap ass like me. Another thing that I really liked about this bike is 